What's nice is we have Sun, Moon, and Mercury there. How we see things, how we feel things, and how we communicate things, all in the same place. You know, all in the same place, all focused towards one thing. So that's a really powerful time to kind of manifest what you want. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wild Wahine. My name is Kehlani, and this is your astro forecast for the next two weeks, starting around March 21st-ish to April 3rd. So we're coming in with the big Aries energy. I'm trying to, wearing a little bit of red today. But we're going to be talking about Mercury conjunct Neptune. We're going to be talking about Mercury's ingress into the sign of Aries. We'll also be covering Mars, Venus, and Saturn, and that whole dance and interesting thing that That'll be happening a little bit more next week when it goes exact. It will also be talking about the new moon in Aries. And I wanted to just plug my free workshop. All the information is going to be below. I'm really, really excited to start this series in working with Luna and taking us through the entire lunation. And we're going to be talking about rituals and magics and herbs and all of those kinds of fun things. So if you're interested in stuff like that and you want to work with the moon, make sure you check out that workshop. If you can't attend live, that's okay because the replay will be available and all of the information will be down Downloadable. So let's dig in right now, starting off with Mercury conjunct Neptune. Now it went exact on the 23rd, but we're feeling all of this energy really until like the 27th, the 28th. A lot of times people use a lot longer orbs when it comes to the outer planets like Neptune. So that's still just energy is going to be in the background, so to speak. So we have Mercury still in Pisces right now where it's not in its strongest place. It's conjunct Neptune, which is basically dissolving everything. And remember, Mercury is how we communicate, sometimes how we think and how we learn things that have to do with schooling, things that have to do with exchange that we're doing. So it could be running errands and the basic mundane things in our life, communication with employees and with work and the exchange of goods and money and so forth going back and forth. So it's been in a, you know, kind of challenging place right now while it's in Pisces, doesn't like to be in Pisces. Remember, it's an ex exaltation and at home in Virgo. So now in Pisces, it's in detriment and in fall. So it's like a very tough place for mercurial things. Now it's conjunct Neptune, which is our planet of imagination, of creativity, of of expansion, of delusion, of fantasy, of storytelling, and just the weird, you know? <laughs> so we have like a fallen Mercury touching Neptune, which dissolves everything. Whenever I think of Neptune, I just think of like a galactic octopus, you know, just this weird, interesting entity where it's like constantly moving its shape. It has a glamour, you know, it it's thick, it's like spiky, it can be smooth, it can have spots, it changes colors all of the time, deeply emotional. There's like all of these little brains on all of its tentacles. It's just this really weird, but gorgeous and graceful type of creature and so I like think of Neptune like that in a way where like with Mercury trying to like get your everyday basic things done trying to have conversations looking at contracts and signing them and just the general weirdness of everything is just very high right now I mean we also have Jupiter that's moving closer and closer to that conjunction with Neptune so we're kind of living in this heightened spiritual things are not exactly as they seem type of place and so if you f are feeling that and yesterday when we were talking in our clubhouse room, people were talking about like, it's just so weird. I feel like I can't, can't wrap my head around things or I'm like talking and communicating, but people don't understand what I'm saying. And I don't understand what people are saying and things are getting lost in the details. And it just feels like I, I just can't get a concrete hold on things. You know, if you're feeling that, you're probably feeling this particular transit and might be hitting one of your natal planets. The one thing though that's really positive about it is, is that it is great for creativity. So if you are writing, if you're painting, if you're drawing, if you're acting, if you're doing any of those types of creative things, this is wonderful energy for that. Um, not necessarily so great with all of your to-do lists and getting things done and planning and organizing. I would definitely push that a little bit more to the new moon that's happening in Aries. That's like a much more better time to kind of sort of get it concrete. Mercury is going to be in Aries and it's going to want to like say and do things and get things done. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But now it's just this kind of weird space. <laughs> so sometimes it can be hard to kind of get the things done, but just know that take a little bit of time double read all of the contracts be careful what you get yourself involved in because sometimes things are not always as they seem you want to kind of you know take a moment to really assess the situation that's going to be really important and just also know that because it's mercury and it's speech and it's conversation conspiracy theories and like untruths will abound right now and there's probably going to be like bigger ones that come up or just 
all kinds of conversations about things that have a you know a grain of truth but they're not really grounded in a lot of truth so just make sure that you're kind of like looking at all of those details and lies and white lies and kind of lies and all of those types of things this is kind of mercury neptune you know area so just know that that is the pool that we are swimming in next up we have mercury moving into the sign of aries so mercury is going to pick up some dignity just based on the fact that it's no longer in pisces it's not like Mercury is like excellent in, you know, Aries or anything like that or at home, but it just is not going to be in fall. It's not going to be in detriment. And the sun is already there. Chiron is also there as well. So it's just really allowing that all of the solar qualities of, you know, Aries. And remember, the sun is in its exaltation. So the sun is doing some really powerful things right now for you in that place in your chart where Aries is. And Mercury moves right in there and then it makes things clear. It makes you focus kind of more so on yourself, what's healthy for you, especially at wherever that place is in your chart and you're able to communicate much more directly much more aggressively sometimes and really stand up for yourself because that is that mars energy aries is the home of mars standing up for yourself defending yourself defending others you know saying no this isn't what i want this is what i want and if you have issues with that sometimes if you feel like you're a little bit more on the meek side and it's really hard to kind of sort of hold your boundaries because remember saturn is associated with boundaries but you do need to have that big mars energy in order to hold them because what is a boundary or a law, which is Saturnian, if you're not able to like enact it, you know, or say like, okay, this is what it is. I'm going to prosecute those who go against that, you know? So that's where Mars comes in to kind of hold the line, hold the boundary and say, no, you're not going to cross here. And so this is places where we are being like really secure and positive and moving forward in what we want to do. Now it can also be a bit frustrating because sometimes it's a headstrong space as you know, Aries rules the head. You know, you can be very headstrong. You can be very passionate. You don't want to like necessarily hear what other people have to say. You can over talk people at times. You can kind of be really a bulldozer verbally with what you're saying and kind of berate people. Um, you can just say something just without any kind of censor. Because remember, the opposite of Aries is Libra, which is like, you know, ruled by Venus, always trying to decide, like, is this the right thing to say? Let's come together. Aries is much more separating. It wants to like cut between two things and, and it, it doesn't mind having an argument it doesn't mind when things get coarse and when things are rough like it kind of sort of thrives in a space like that so this isn't necessarily conversations that are going to be like yay kumbaya this is definitely conversations where you're just like putting your energy out there and you're not stopping until you get what you want it can be forceful energy it can be aggressive energy it could be very sensual sexual type of energy or communication you know that's coming through so again if you are the type of person that like leads with that type of energy you lead with the big kind of, you know, Aries, Mars energy, this is going to probably send it in overdrive. So you might want to just check that so you're not doing the whole mea culpa. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, Carl's. Everybody that has strong Aries placements know that it's like, blah, blah. And then you're like, oh, I can't believe I said that. And then you got to go back and apologize and all of that type of stuff. So those are things that happen. Balancing that energy is going to be really important. On the flip side of that, though, it can be such a great energy for like inciting others to do things that are like really positive for them or to incite the group towards going in a direction that you want. So if you're giving a speech, if you're giving a pep talk, it's very much like Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar after, you know, they all the conspirators killed Caesar and he's speaking to the crowd and basically saying, look at what they did. You know, this is not right. And essentially sways the crowd who at the beginning when Brutus was giving his speech because he's so monotone, you know, they were saying, oh, yeah, Caesar deserved to die. But after Mark Anthony's passionate speech at that point, they were just like really enraged and they definitely wanted to like kill the um, conspirators that killed Caesar just because he gave such a passionate speech. So this is energy that can be really positive and really good for that. So next up, we have Venus conjunct Saturn. We're going to be feeling that energy essentially now from all the way until like April 1st, possibly April 4th. It'll go exact on the 28th. So this is going to be intense energy for um, the Venusian in making this who's been really having this constant conversation with one of the malefic planets which is mars and now it's having this deep conversation as it conjuncts saturn in saturn sign of aquarius so essentially like anybody that's playing in the aquarian space has to essentially bow down to saturn right now because saturn is there and that is his sign so venus in this space 
there are some positive things that can come from it and then there's some challenging things. So a lot of times Venus conjunct Saturn can have to do with older women. Think of like the triple goddess, the Baba Yaga, the Tutu, the grandmothers, um, women that are sages, the crone, like those type of archetypes It can have something to do with that, something to do with like things that are age, knowledge that comes from older women. Um, Venus also has to do with women in general, with arts. Um, so it can be something with traditional arts, something with tradition coming back. Venus also has to do with our relationships relationships. So with Venus and Saturn having a conversation, Saturn oftentimes cools off things, which can be good because Venus has been with Mars where things have been hot. They have been passionate. They have been heavy. There has just been intense fighting. So meeting up with Saturn can cool things off, can level things out, can make things a little bit more structured, can make things um, like more agreeable. The rules of engagement changes a little bit. It can slow things down as Mars likes to speed things up and keep it hot and heavy and moving. So it can be a cooling off period. It can be an ending of sorts. It can be um, some sort of like catastrophic molt, like, you know, a praying, a female praying mantis or a black widow spider after you mate, they kill the mate and then eat them. Definitely things that we're working hard at, things that take a little bit of struggle, um, a little bit of hard times in order to accomplish them and get them done. Structure that we're putting into our relationships or how we're relating to other people. And also just the time that it takes to create things that are beautiful beautiful works of art, beautiful relationships. What are some of the things that we need to do, the kind of like methodical step by step things we need to do in order to have those accomplishments? So Mars is also gonna be conjunct Saturn. That's gonna be perfecting on the third or the fourth, depending upon where you are in the world. And we're gonna be feeling that energy until April 10th or 14th. So first we have Venus coming through with that cooling off and that kind of restructuring with Saturn. And then we have Mars, which wants to blaze through with all of its passion. But again, it's meeting Saturn. Saturn, which is basically a no, you know, because it's cooler and it's like holding off that big energy. When Mars and Saturn, our two malefic planets, meet, sparks can fly, sometimes in not a great way, just because it's an unstoppable force meets an immovable object and that can just kind of like no one's getting anywhere with that particular energy but remember because this is saturn's home sign he has the home advantage so whatever mars wants to do in terms of destroy and cut up and whatever saturn is just kind of sort of desiccating that and slowly kind of sort of picking apart the idea it can be very intense um, it can be big fights or big fighting. You know, we currently have many wars that are happening all over the world. So we can see definitely like a heightened energy with this coming in and then an eventual cooling off in some ways. It can be vindictive, it can be aggressive. So you wanna just be careful just in your interpersonal lives at this time, be careful of like sharp objects and fire and all of those types of things that can happen. It can be very extremes of weather, whether that be like extreme heat or fires. And since it is Mars, Venus, Saturn, you know, there is that concern with the Venusian there with, you know, women. We have Mars, which is definitely like um, rules military and police officers and women potentially in the military, women that are police officers and just that kind of dynamic. Mars has a tendency to be a lot of young, youthful energy. Saturn is the sage, some, you know, it's the older general who's been there, who's done that, who knows what's going on. It's the older leader where Mars are like the young, youthful, kind of, you know, wet behind the ears type of energy. So it definitely is a time where things will cook and there's a lot that can come up that is very difficult and very challenging. And it kind of will reach a peak, you know, before it comes back down. And then we'll have Venus eventually enter Pisces, which will make everyone feel a lot better. But things are coming to a head in terms of the volatility and just in our interpersonal lives and also around the world. So just be looking out for that in terms of weather, in terms of, you know, people, in terms of countries. So that's going to be really a time where things are cooking and you just don't want to at that time take any unnecessary necessary risk, really do any kind of, um, you know, road rage, watch, watch your temper. You know, the sun is in Aries at that time. We also have Mercury in Aries. So the likelihood of people just losing their cool and just kind of engaging in a physical way and, you know, in ways where normally you would just let things pass. People are on a little bit of a short fuse, you know? So you just want to know that like, if you say something, someone might say something back. If you step to someone, someone might step forward. It's not a bluffing time. You know, if you engage, you will be engaged with at this time. So you just want to know that.
nobody's backing down because <laughs> that's the thing like Aries energy is like never ever 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 back down so the next thing we're going to talk about is the new moon in Aries that's going to be happening on the 31st and on the first depending upon where you are in the world um it's at 8 23 Hawaii standard time on the 31st and if you're on the Pacific coast it's 11 23 but if you're on the east coast that's going to be happening on the first at 2 23 a.m now the moon is going to be at 11 degrees with the sun and we have chiron at 12 degrees and we have mercury at nine degrees so they're all being a very close conjunction with each other for this particular new moon now again like i said hopefully you'll check out the free new moon workshop that i have going on this sunday whether you attend live or you catch the replay all of the information is below so i hope you can make that so for this particular new moon it's interesting because it's not really aspected by any other planet than just the conjunction all together with the sun the moon um chiron and mercury now we do have neptune and and jupiter and jupiter is moving a little bit closer to neptune as you know as this time goes on so there is all of the wishes and dreams and hopes and all of the possibilities all of the things that you think can happen and like in this new moon is where you're really planting the seeds for that to happen not even so much about the foundation because i think like we're using that jupiter neptune and i'm going to do a separate video on that energy to kind of imagine what it is we want and now we're we're actually like laying it down we're laying down the track we're planting the seeds for the things that we want and a lot of this especially with Aries depending upon where it is in your chart has to do with ourselves because Aries represents the self like who you are what you're doing in whatever particular part of your life that is like what is it that you want where have you especially with Chiron there where have you not been maybe showing up for yourself where has it been some wounding there that has made it you not able to to really like fully empower yourself with that Mars energy. What's nice is we have Sun, Moon, and Mercury there. So essentially it's like how we see things, how we feel things, and how we communicate things all in the same place, you know, all in the same place, all focused towards one thing. So that's a really powerful time to kind of manifest what you want. Now, what's nice about the planting the seeds in Aries uh, as it is right now is that Jupiter is going to be entering Aries once it leaves Pisces. And so all of the things that you plant now, think of Jupiter coming in and adding water and just drenching it with water and like really good, healthy fertilizer. So all of those roots can grow up really nice and strong and bear you the fruit of your desires which is the desire that you have with Jupiter and Neptune like basically like the things that you want in your life that you didn't think that you could have the things that are kind of even larger than life that you're imagining for yourself here's some energy that comes along and says well we can match that but you do have to show up and do the work for it but like you have the energy and the passion to be able to do that and i think that's just really cool which is one of the reasons why this new moon um i think is going to be really special so you have the passion you have the energy you have the idealism behind it you have all of the power in order to do it um, you have all of the excitement to do it it. the question becomes then what is it that you want it's really amazing how many times you'll ask a person you should just do it try ask people well, what do you really want what do you really want to do or what is it that you really want in your life or where do you really want to live what is it that you want that you're scared to say that you want that you um don't think that you can get because there's the possibility now if you can actually listen to yourself and say what you want and face the fear that you have around really claiming that for yourself, that you can start to plant the seeds so that you can build that for yourself or welcome that in. So I just wanna take a moment to pull out Chiron. So Chiron is a comet and um, a lot of people work with the comets, they work with asteroids. I do like to work with Chiron, I do feel like it is prominent in a chart and especially when we have conjunctions or harsh aspects like squares and oppositions to Chiron and especially your natal Chiron you can definitely see that show up in your chart so Chiron and I'll link the video below or above because I talked a little bit more like a while back about Chiron and essentially he was a senator that was injured he's not able to die he had to suffer with this injury and he was a healer he was a teacher and he did a lot of really wonderful things for everyone but he was always suffering with 
with this ailment that he had. And really through his suffering, he was able to be a better teacher and a better healer, but it was always something that he came back to like a core wound. And essentially that's what Chiron is. It's the place where we have our core wounds. It's the place where we revisit time and time again, where it gets a little bit better, but it's still a little sore. You have to baby it a little bit. It's still very sensitive. So Chiron right now, transiting Chiron is in Aries. So think of Chiron This is this place where with Uranus, we're breaking away from energy with Saturn. It has like a limiting space. So we're dealing with our limiting beliefs, the things that we don't think that we can do. And then Uranus is where we break off and feel like we can do things. And Chiron is that wound that kind of sits there in the middle that holds us back at times. But if we can actually like figure out a way to work with that energy, to work with the pain, to work with the trauma surrounding that, then we can break away and we can reach for the things that we want to reach for. You know, with all of this really big energy that's happening in Aries, especially with the new moon, we will be dealing with wounded place wherever it is that Aries is in your chart, you know? And if you want to know where that is, definitely make sure to book a reading so we can talk about that. There is a place, we all have it, we have a natal Chiron, that's a place where there's a core wound. And as Chiron transits through, we have a space, of course, where, you know, there are some challenges that have to do with that. So we are going to have to face that, you know, where is it in our lives where being a warrior and standing up for ourselves and like really focusing on ourselves is hard, you know? Why is it hard for us to focus on ourselves and kind of sort of going into that and going into the deepness of that is going to be something that's deeply important for us. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you check out my new moon in Aries video. If you get this um, membership group will be opening up in April, which I'm really excited about. So we're building to that. Make sure that if you haven't already subscribe, if you like astrology and spirituality and all of the conversations about that, you can, if you want to just get on and live and chat with me and all of that, I'm on clubhouse every Wednesday. So all of that information information is below as well. And I just want you guys to have a beautiful next two weeks. There'll be more videos coming up. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. I always do answer them and have a beautiful and wonderful week. Bye -bye.